Good morning everyone, it's Julie at the Paper Bag Lady 1 and I've got a project share for you this morning. This is the last of my custom orders that I am finishing up. Well, it's finished now, I guess I'm not finishing it up anymore. Um, and this is the one <laughs> that has been a long time trying to get through. I, I just kept hitting roadblocks the whole way through. But anyway, it is here, it is finished. And what this is, is a recipe binder um, for a wedding shower gift. And the customer contacted me and wanted to know if I could do something like this. So I said, okay. And the first thing we kind of had to decide was, did we want it like a paper bag album or an actual binder or with book rings or what did we want to do? And she decided that she wanted a binder. So what I actually did is I found this one of the, well, it's green, but here's a pink one. It's um, Snap Simple Stories. And it came with, um, this has all the stuff in it basically now, but it came with three dividers and then... The, a bunch of papers and um, the little, what you call them, the little page protector things for um, your journaling cards and whatnot. But I wanted the binder and I wanted these dividers. And I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm seeing my obnoxious purple fingernails on the camera. And um, I'm getting a cold and I felt yucky and I wanted something to cheer me up. So I painted my fingernails purple, except for the thumb, which I cut when I was trying to file the nail. Like I cut the skin, like I didn't file it so low. I just, it was a sharp file. But anyway, so I just have a bandaid on that one. You didn't need to know that. <laughs> anyway, just explaining my wild purple fingers. So anyway, so that is the binder that I used. And then she told me that she had nine different sections that she wanted. So I used the two sets of binder things that came in here. There were three in here and three in here. I know there's still three in here. I'll get to that in a moment. And then I took chipboard and trace and cut the other ones and then covered them with pattern paper. Um, so I'm going to open this for a second because as you can see, the rings on here, are, I mean, it's a fairly big, um, bind this light is awful fairly big binder but the rings are not humongous so once I got them all papered and covered and everything then I took eyelets and I got these from Mo at Butter blah, 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 blah. Mo, it's Monday morning <laughs> Mo at Butterby scraps and then I set these with my what do you call that thing that crocodile oh my gosh and then when I went to put them back in, they wouldn't fit because these apparently, which I should have thought, but it added dimension to it. So then they all didn't fit in the thing. So, oh, now what do I do? So I said to the lady, I can either take out some or I can build you a binder and use like I was going to use two inch book rings. And so you'd have to open them individually to put things in and out. But it's only two. So, you know, and I kind of wanted to do that because I kind of wanted to build a binder. I thought that would be fun. But anyway, she said, no, let's take two out. So ideally taking three out would have been better, but we took two out and, and it still didn't fit quite the way I wanted it to. So that's when I decided to take matters into my own hands. And because I was the one who put the tall things on, I went and I bought another, <laughs> I went and I bought another binder. So I thought, well, we'll do volume one and volume two. <laughs> So that's what I did. So let's talk about them. Um, she wanted, she had seen a picture of a cookbook junk journal that I did once and it had this cover on it, which she really liked, which of course I didn't have anymore because I had used it. And then she also liked the dangly um, old measuring spoons, which I actually did have more of because I like those. So what I did is I went online and finally found this on eBay for a reasonable price bought it, scanned it <laughs> so that I would have the image again. And um, I don't know why that printed a different color. We printed it on a laser printer because I didn't want it to, um, if it got wet, I didn't want there to be a problem. But anyway, so this was actually Rickoff's cookbook, but she wanted to know if I could put the last name instead. And I said, sure. So I thought that was fun. And then it's the Lima Tea Company in Lima, Lima. I'm not sure how you say it in Ohio. But in Ohio, she wondered if I could change that to Philadelphia, which I considered, but I didn't really have any letters small enough. Also, that wouldn't spread the whole way across the book. So we decided to leave it as it is. And then she really liked the vintage look. So we just put a couple of 
little embellishments on the cover, some doilies. Monica, I cut that with my new doily die. <laughs> anyway, so let's go inside. And she also wanted, um, whoops, to know if I could do like a conversion chart here on the inside. So what I did was I didn't have, whoops, I'm walking. I didn't have any cookbooks that had that in it. So what I did was I went to my mother's house and, oh, look, I found an old cookbook. And, oh, look what was on the inside. So I ripped the cover off. She told me I could. I ripped the cover off and brought it home. Um, and then we scanned that also. Because I couldn't find one that wasn't, like, I looked at a bunch of cookbooks and they were all stuck on the inside page. They weren't any loose. I might sneeze. So if I do, I'm sorry. Anyway, we did that. Um, and that's on the inside of both of them. And then what we did was... She gave me the different categories that she wanted, and then I kind of built embellishments on this. So I will show you these. So this one is appetizers, and actually what I did, whoops, what I did for this is I printed them out on, ooh, it's right here. I thought it was. Where'd it go? Where's my paper? Here it is. It's clear sticker paper. Silhouette. Silhouette. Clear sticker paper. Um, so I had to order this online. That was kind of another thing that held me up. So I did that. And then what I did was I took a, and I just did that on my regular inkjet printer. So then I took another layer of the sticker paper over top so that if it got wet, it wouldn't run. Um, anyway, so here we have appetizers, easy to make tiny tempters. And these, I went through all my old cookbooks and stuff and found things. And then my vocabulary cards. So that's the appetizers. And then we go, oh, and on the back there's a pocket. And I just stuck a bunch of recipe cards in each one. She can add her own, of course. And then here was another, <laughs> here was another hold up on this whole extravaganza. So my friend Mo had a template that she had made for recipe sheets. So she sent it to me. And of course my computer didn't have the right font. So it opened it up in like Greek or something. And we kept trying and we kept trying. We couldn't get it to work. So she finally sent me a PDF of it. My neighbor printed it out for me so we could see what it was like. And it was beautiful and it was perfect, except that, and I don't know why that, actually, you know what? I don't think my neighbor did print it out from the PDF. I think she finally got one of the documents to work. But at any rate, when we printed out, it was a double, you know, kind of landscape on a eight and a half by 11. Somehow it wasn't centered exactly. And because we wanted to be able to print it on the back, it wasn't going to cut in the middle and I have to cut and trim. So finally in frustration, I just decided to copy her layout and just build my own. So I built my own, printed it out, put it on the other side, saw where it wasn't quite centered, shifted it around. It was a big, long, involved process, but now I have it. Then I <laughs> wanted to print this on a laser printer again so that it wouldn't run or drip. So my dad has a laser printer. So I go down there and I have it on a flash drive and it won't open it up properly. I don't know. I'm not very technological. All that frustration. Finally, I took it to Staples and I had my copy printed out both sides. And I said, can I bring my own paper? And they should said, sure. Now my paper was, it's cardstock of a sort. It's thinner than like a standard 65 pound weight cardstock, but it's also thicker than copy paper. I really don't know what it is. So they put it in their printer and it kept eating the paper <laughs> 45 minutes. I was there trying to get this all worked out. Finally, they prevailed. They were frustrated. They didn't know what the problem was because it's not that the paper was too thick. Anyway, whew, I was, I said, I just can't wait to be done with this project. I mean, it's really cool, but it's putting me over the deep end. So anyway, so we finally got it worked out and there we have the thing. So that's in between each one. I think there's like five or six sheets in between each one. All right, moving on. Breads and muffins. So here we have a picture of bread. More pocket. Oops. Ooh, I'm eating a lemon head. Ooh, whoo, sorry. Anyway, all right, here we have breakfast. The formal breakfast suggested menu, eggs and oranges. And look at this totally adorable little charm. Can you see that? It's a little pan, but it's got bacon and eggs on it. And I got that from Mo over at Butterbee Scraps. Awesome. Okay, here we have salads. 
bringing salads into your meals in the garden. I mean, I know salads aren't just from the garden, but I like that. Here we have soup and sandwiches. So we have taste, pleasure, soups and chowder, a chapter on sandwiches. This color didn't really work completely, but it was what I found and I liked the image. And then finally on this one, we have um, main course. So we have meat, poultry, fish, dish, plate, course. And look, here's another charm from Mo. It's a little, little plate with the spoon and the fork and the knife on it. Okay, so that is volume one. And again, whoops, I put six in here and that's a pretty tight fit. So she can rearrange it however she likes. But anyway, there's the first one. Here's the second one I use. It's the same image, but I used a different. The first ones were Scrabble tiler, tiles. And this is from, I think, a game called Dig. And then I did the embellishments a little bit differently. But the inside is the same. And then these categories, we have desserts. So we have sweet treats, sugar. And then it's like a little whisk there. I'm crazy. I know it. And then here we have drinks. Um, easy to make beverages for the crowd. Um, coffee and tea. And there's a little teapot that also came from Mo. And then finally we have snacks. I couldn't really find any images or anything fun for that. So we just have bite little amount. Tiny, tiny. And then I had put a whole bunch of these in the back. Because once I got them printed, I was like, darn it, we're using them. Um, so they're in the back for extras. So, you know, for example, if it, oops. That one doesn't seem to, I must have punched that eyelet just a little bit. Not quite exactly right. Oopsies. Oh well. Too late now. I can't fix it. <laughs> um, if this one becomes too fat, she can always transfer and rearrange these in whatever order that she likes. And I just put them in that way. So anyway, that was my very exhausting um, journey into making a recipe binder. <laughs> and I really like how they turned out, but I tell you what, I don't want to do this project again, if ever, <laughs> for a very long time, if ever, I should say. Um, but I really hope that she likes them. Um, I've contacted her to let her know they're ready. I think the shower is hmm, not this coming weekend, but I think the next weekend, if I'm not mistaken. At any rate. Um, so anyway, so this is my my latest creation. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing it. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to know what you think. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. I hope you all have a great week and I will hopefully be back to talk to you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.